This is ridiculous. Do you have any idea what time we'll get out of here? Nobody likes to work late. Least of all me. Do you have plans tonight? No, nope, I don't. Remember when you told us not to make plans because we were working? Yes, I remember. Mmm, this is BS. This is BS. Why are we here? I am gonna call corporate. Enough is enough. I'm, God, I'm so mad. This is Michael Scott, Scranton. Well, we don't want to work. No, we don't. It's not fair to these people. These people are my friends and I care about them. We're not gonna do it. Everybody, I just got off the horn with corporate and uh, basically I told them where they could stick their little overtime assignment. Go enjoy your Friday. Thank you, Michael. All right. All right. Happy Friday. Well, I think we dodged a bullet there. I think you did. I think we should celebrate. How about you, Pam, me, Casa, little dinner dancing drinks? Oh, I... You said you didn't have plans. That's what you said. And as for me and my current romantic life, I uh, am single now and looking. So if you know anybody. Jim and I went to dinner a few times when he got back from New York. I talked him through his breakup. It's really nice to be good friends again. Are you kidding me? Pam and Jim are totally hooking up. All they do is smile. They're just keeping it a secret, right? I don't know. There is no evidence of intimacy. They've been in remarkably good moods. Could be other things. Are you kidding me? And Sunday, I'm thinking of going to that flea market at the drive-in. Oh, that sounds fun. I'm mountain biking on Sunday in uh, Montage Mountain. Cool. Yeah. Well, have fun with that. The complaint was about Jim and Pam, so. No way. What? You guys are together? Um, yep. Yes, we are. Whoa! Wow! Tuna! Awesome! I knew it. Tuna. To the two of you. Yes! Yes! Toby, was this your fun little way of congratulating us? Yes. Mm-hmm. China. China. Michael, how was the dentist? It was great. China. Are you okay? What's wrong? Everything here was made in China, Pam. Yeah, it's where they make stuff. They used to make stuff in America, Andy. But we're falling behind. Did you know that? China is a sleeping dragon that is just beginning to stir. Oh, no. Yeah. Right here. It is right there. Anybody read the news anymore? China is on the move. I found that in the waiting room at the dentist's office. This kid had the magazine I wanted to read. That's the only one I could reach. And I read it, and then I read it again. My whole life, I believed that America was number one. That was the saying. Not America's number two. England is number two. China should be like eight. I say we bomb them. By 2020, they're going to be the world's largest economy, and they're getting a taste for protein. We'll all starve. Yeah, Dwight's right. We should drop the bomb. No, he's not right. We're not. Where would we even drop it, Phyllis? Did you know that in China, there are 56 cities with over a million people? You know how many we have here? Nine. <gasps> Actually, that's not true. I know the figure you're referring to, and it's a projection of 15 years from now. Thank God. No, no, that is right now. Michael, China is agrarian. Urbanizing fast? You betcha. But still agrarian. Most in terms of land, not population. Come on, Michael. No, you're no, you're wrong about this. Where are you getting this information? I got it from NewYorkTimes.com. Uh-oh, getting nervous, Oscar. OK, someone look it up. I'm on it, Jim. I'm on it. Guys, it's not worth it, really. Guys, this is not worth our time. Are you watching this? Seriously? Well, are you? I'm sitting right here. Got it. China has 56 cities with a population of over 1 million. The US has nine. Suck it, Oscar. Well, on the plus side, all this worrying about China has made you smarter than Oscar, Michael. Great. I was wrong. I'm wrong. Is everyone happy? Well, <laughs> so I happen to know more than the smartest guy in the office. So what? <laughs> I don't care. We need an A team, a backup team, and a just have fun team. So you guys all know yourselves. Good timers, follow me. Backups. Go on, kids. You know you don't belong here. 18. Okay. 
All right, everybody. Nice self-awareness. Except... Okay. All right, guys. After nine rounds, let's check the scores. In first place, with nine points, it's Aesop's Foibles. The Quarantine Bears have seven points. Dunder Mifflin A team has four points. The DM Backup team has three points. The Einsteins have eight points. Ladies Gaga have five points. So, our best chance of hitting our mark is now in the hands and brains of Kevin, Meredith, Aaron, and Kelly. Do I like these odds? My answer is no. Woo! Means the top three teams are gonna finish it off in the speed round. So let's get everyone some bells. In third place we have the Einsteins. Oh yeah! <laughs> Second place we have the Quarantine Bears. <laughs> and first place is Aesop's Foibles. <laughs> yeah, but they're gonna get clobbered. Ring it in when you know it. First question. This man had a fatwa declared on him when... Einstein's? What, what is it? I did my part, babe. I'm just the bell girl. Hey, Sops? Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie is correct. <laughs> Heading out to sea, sailors. <laughs> on a square-rigged ship, the sail set furthest forward is called what? Princess Ding Dong, do not hit that bell. Flying head. jib. Flying Jib is correct for the Einsteins. <laughs> According to a recent survey, this is the most common learning disability among American adolescents. Boom! ADHD. No. Wrong. The answer is dyslexia. That's correct for the Einsteins. <laughs> Sir, sir, dial it back. This isn't tail feathers. Final round. Last two teams squaring off. I hope you're ready to play doctor. Our question is about the health and the human body. Oh, come on. The standard American analog scale has a maximum capacity of what weight? 300 pounds. Point for the Einstein. Here's your final question. Cinephiles, put on your memory berets. This 2001 masterpiece from Gilles Paquet Brenner explores the intricate dynamics of a family in disarray. The title of the film is Le Scafandre et le Papillon. Yes. I'm sorry, no. Over to the Einsteins. Les Jolies Choses. Are you sure? Marianne Cotillard exposes herself a number of times in that film. The Einsteins win it. No! Come on! Come on! Win it. Look, I know it's easy to say tonight was just a fluke, and maybe it was, but here's a piece of trivia. A fluke is one of the most common fish in the sea. So if you go fishing for a fluke, chances are you just might catch one. Oh, good. Right down the street, mm -hmm. Kenneth Road, born and raised. Spent my whole life right here in Lackawanna County, and I do not intend on moving. <laughs> I know this place. I know how many hospitals we have. I know how many schools we have. It's home, you know? I know the challenges of this county's up against. Here's the thing about those discount suppliers. They don't care. They come in, they undercut everything, and they run us out of business, and then once we're all gone, we jack up the prices. I don't know. It's, it's bad. It's terrible. It is. You know what? It really is. Oh, true. I don't know. I guess I could give you guys our business, but you have to meet me halfway, okay? Because they're expecting me to make cuts. Well, corporate's gonna go ballistic, but uh, you think we could, Jan? 